uh, Dr. Outlaw came to me, and uh, she was actually trying to check on the parking spaces and the, the parking situation. And uh, it's kind of interesting when the staff came to me and they said, uh, someone by the name of Dr. Outlaw wants to speak to the police chief. I, uh, <laughs> I was kind of afraid to leave my office. I didn't know what the situation was. But anyway, I want to say that I appreciate the opportunity to come out and uh, speak a little bit. This may be different than most of the presentations you've seen because this is actually from the student's perspective. Uh, I have had the unique opportunity to go to both uh, a traditional college here at USC Aiken. And uh, the other thing that I did was I obtained my master's degree online and then after that decided I wanted to go for a terminal degree. So I started pursuing an EDD in organizational leadership and then the program opened up for a PhD in the same degree that I had a master's degree in, so I was looking at trying to save some money. Uh, I'm actually in the dissertation phase, and if you see I cross that out, I think that's more like a day's working on the, uh, on my dissertation now, so I did that to, uh, to be funny here, but this is just going to be a candid conversation about what I think is important uh, from the student's perspective and what we're looking for. Uh, there are some difficulties with doing this online, and there are also some advantages. So I want to discuss that and look at that and give you some uh, some feedback as far as what I've seen from different programs that I've, I've been in. Let me also say when I was here at USC Aiken, I took one of the first classes online and that was uh, offered in the political science program. Dr. Bosch, who's still here, offered a political science class online, which is kind of dangerous, political science, but uh, lowered inhibitions and you could say almost what you wanted to and no one knew who they were talking to. So that was a dangerous thing. but. I hopefully I'll bring some perspective to you specific to online learning from a student uh, that's had both backgrounds in both areas. These are the questions that I want to consider uh, this afternoon is the general concerns associated with online institutions. Uh, what are the qualities of successful online learners? Uh, what are the students' expectations concerning an online university, uh, or maybe just a class or a program? What are successful qualities of online professors? And what are the pros of online education as well as the cons and how can these be overcome? So these are just some areas. And then if you have any questions, be glad to discuss that. Like I said, I want this to be a candid discussion uh, for us to look at this. And if you're teaching online, if you're considering doing this, uh, maybe this will give you some, some input from, from a student's perspective. You know, I've had a lot of collaboration with other students, so this isn't just me, but this is, you know, in discussing online learning and some of the difficulties that, that I've experienced. So a general concern, I, I pulled this up when I started looking into this topic, and online teaching and learning is making a significant impact on the fabric of higher education, and there have been as many concerns about the quality of online education. I think that's the, the question that probably started back in the 90s when this type format for education began, is we want to give them the opportunity to learn, but we don't want to in any way diminish the quality of online education or the quality of an education in general. And uh, I think there are some issues that could arise from this and some things that we need to think about or you need to think about if you're going to teach a class because you've got to overcome some obstacles and you want to make sure that you're impacting the students in a meaningful way. Uh, when Dr. Outlaw came and approached me about parking for this event, um, it sort of got me on a little rant about what I thought about online education because sometimes it's not as well ex accepted as uh, traditional brick and mortar. But I think that a student that does undergo a degree online probably does it out of uh, necessity and maybe probably because of convenience. So those are two things that I'll look at there. Those are two that, that I did. Qualities of a successful online learner. These are just a few. And I crossed that online learner because uh, the online aspect, this, this is success for anyone, whether it's online or not online. But I think that you would probably agree with me if you're going to go the online route, it's probably because of work uh, that you have to figure out how to get, a, get around that. Uh, that's the situation that I had. Uh, when I began working on my master's degree, I was working a 60, 70, 80-hour work week uh, for another law enforcement uh, department that's in this area, and I had to figure out if I actually wanted to get this education, how can I get it? And, uh, and these were things that I considered when it came time for that. Uh, you have to be a good time manager. I think that you believe in that. Uh, you have to be organized, which goes into time management. 
You have to have a sense of self-discipline. You have to be self-motivated, committed, and you have to be comfortable using technologies. You know, in terms of time management, organized self-discipline, being self-motivated, those type things. If you're not, because of the work environment, because of what you have and the obligations for work, you could probably just consider yourself not going to get an education. So I think that the advantage to online learning is the fact that you can continue your education and you don't have to cut any corners. Uh, and, and if you do your research, you can find uh, an accredited good university or a good program or a good class that you'd like to take where it is convenient for you. There's some flexibility there, but you're also able to get that good quality education. And, and I'll discuss that in just a few minutes as to what I think is necessary to do that. Uh, I knew after I left here at USC Aiken that I didn't want to stop. I wanted to continue, but then life sort of throws you for a loop. You've got to overcome those work uh, obligations, and, and like I said, I, that was the biggest struggle that I had. How could I get a, an education that was in a flexible format? <clears throat> as far as student expectations of a university college program or class, first of all, it's a student's obligation to make sure that the program is accredited. And I mention that because I have friends that have started uh, online learning who did not ensure that that was a factor there. And so they got a piece of paper. It wasn't accredited. And so they don't, you know, they, they don't get credit for that. It's not of much use in terms of credit. Uh, the education process is there. The learning is there. Uh, but there's nothing really to show for it. So that's something they really need to look into. But that is the student's responsibility. We want quality. Okay, we're not asking for a compromise because it is online. We think that uh, it should be a good quality education. We like interaction. Uh, it may be thought that a student who pursues online learning does not enjoy interaction. I don't think that's the case. Uh, like I mentioned a few minutes ago, we pursue online learning because it's flexible and it meets our demands as far as our schedules, but we do want interaction. Uh, we want that dialogue. I think that's important to any type of learning. And uh, an expectation is that there's an, uh, an atmosphere of learning convenience. Now, when I say that, what I mean by that is, is that sort of ties into that flexibility. Uh, we, we want a program that allows us to do that work whenever we can and wherever we can. And uh, anytime there's a connection to the Internet, that work can be completed. This goes into the qualities of successful online instruction. I mentioned a minute ago, we want connection or dialogue, and I think that's important. We also look for things like creativity. And when I say that, I mean creativity on the part of the professor providing that class, because it could be a, a matter of, here's your syllabus, read it online, complete these uh, different tasks, make sure they're submitted on time, and follow back up to see what your grades are. Well, it needs to be a little better than that for us. Uh, if you don't, there's no connection with the human, even though it's done through... Uh, computer interface. We do enjoy that interaction. Uh, the good thing is is that most of us who are going to pursue online education are comfortable with technology. And the other good thing is is that we're going to increase our abilities in the, in the technological field. And not only are you just going to take classes online, but you're also probably going to take part in a webinar. You're going to do a, a teleconference or, or something to, to that effect. And those are important aspects that I'll mention in just a few minutes. I think we have to understand that there are limitations of the online environment, and that ties back into the creativity necessary for the class to be successful, for you to actually get out of that class information that's useful uh, for you and useful for your application later. Uh, those are things that we'll discuss in just a minute. The advantages of an online environment is it aids in building computer skills, and I mentioned that just a few minutes ago. In terms of building computer skills, uh, you have to be savvy. You have to use multiple programs. And, uh, and I think that working on a degree online also builds those skills. We're looking for convenience, flexibility. Uh, like I mentioned a, a minute ago, you can accomplish the tasks that you have in your assignments anywhere as long as you have an Internet connection. It could be a coffee shop. It could be at work on a break. It could be... Uh, in an airport. And uh, an interesting thing also, and I mentioned this before the class started, is you have reduced inhibitions in the class. So in some ways that is an advantage. Uh, 
the political science class that I'd taken back in the 90s here at USC Aiken. The interesting part about that was is uh, I became known for saying things uh, online that I probably wouldn't say in person. And uh, I think that was kind of comical. And that was a, a neat aspect of that. And uh, it's like email or sending a text message. We'll often say or do things that we may not be brave enough to do in person. And it may be something that we need to say. Uh, so that's uh, an interesting part of that. There are disadvantages to online learning. Uh, there's limited interaction. This goes back to the creativity that's required on the part of the school or the program or the professor to figure out how you can increase interaction. Uh, just because we are uh, seeking an online degree does not mean that we don't want interaction uh, with other students or with the professor. And that's sort of a barrier that we, we have to overcome. Uh, there are barriers which ties into this that are imposed by the online environment. And those barriers are it's not face-to-face, -face, and there's an absence of real-time feedback. And I think you can understand how that happens. Often uh, it may be the case that you submit a paper, and it may be several weeks before you get that information back, so you don't know what the grade is. Or um, you submit Chapter 2 of your dissertation, and it takes three or four weeks for that to be reviewed, and you get it back with a lot of red marks on it. Uh, but we that's a disadvantage to a degree that, that we don't get immediate feedback like you would in a classroom having a discussion uh, asking a question of the professor so those are important aspects of that so the question then arises is how do you overcome those disadvantages how, how would a professor overcome that I don't pretend to teach the class or I haven't taught a class online but these are just things that that I've experienced from my perspective I think one good thing that a professor could do is establish their office hours for students who are online to give them a call so that you can actually have that interaction. Just providing your students with office hours that you would take a phone call is important. Uh, and to utilize real-time interaction. The best classes that, have I, that I have had were those classes where it was mandatory for you to have a teleconference or a webinar. And we usually did that at a time that was most convenient for everyone. Weekend, Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, uh, we had a webinar or we did a teleconference where we actually talked and it was expected that we answer questions and we debated issues or we had a dialogue about certain topics that we were discussing. Usually the professor prepared before that to ask questions that sort of sparked that discussion and then those discussions would last for an hour and often we'd have to get cut off and they'd say, hey, no more about this, we'll have to follow back up later. But uh, I think that's important, figuring out how you can gain some real-time interaction. Uh, some of the most enjoyable times that I have had were with other students in residencies. Uh, the university that I go to now requires that you attend four residencies, and in those residencies, you're with other students in the same program that you're in, uh, in presentations specific to the topic that you're studying, and you're in dialogue with other students, uh, completing uh, projects in the class and, and doing those type things. So those are good. Some students don't like it. They pick an online learning environment because they don't want to have to have face-to-face -face interaction, possibly. But I think that you lose a lot of the quality when you don't have those interactions with each other. Uh, develop and implement group projects. There are a lot of things that can be used, like chat sessions or chat rooms that are actually set up at some of these universities where you go in and click and everyone signs in at a uh, predetermined time and then you meet up and then you discuss topics. Or you develop a group paper and you submit those projects and I think that is an important thing for us to do. Uh, it's interesting how the uh, gain friendships and conversations just by having those with people online. I still talk to them today. So I kind of went through this fast because I don't uh, I don't know what people may have questions about but if there's any information that I could provide that are this candid information from my perspective I'd be glad to answer any of these. Anything there? Do we have any questions? Have we had any so far? Can you, uh, not yet. Okay. Can you speak to your experiences with the organization of courses that you had? Now, do you mean when you say organization, you mean the order that I was given those classes, or what? What do you no, mean? The, the, the delivery of them. Uh, whether there were, whether it was well organized, uh, whether you had courses that you had to sit down and take time to reorganize to make sense to you. Uh, you know, inconsistencies and in naming conventions, things like that. 
That's a good question. When I began the online program for my master's degree, that was back in 2005, and I've seen a lot of drastic changes since then, and I'll just say this about it. Initially, when the program started, uh, the professors had a lot of input as to how the class was going to be set up. Now I see it becoming more of a cookie-cutter effect where every class is almost the same, different subject matter, but it's set, set up the same, it's formatted the same. I think an advantage that that these professors and the colleges need to look at would be the fact that the professors need to give input as to that class and how that class needs to be formatted and use the expertise of the professor teaching the class. Uh, a disadvantage would be to streamline it to the degree that every class is exactly the same in the organization of the class where there's no input from the professor. And, and I have seen where that started going in that direction. I don't think all colleges have been like that, but uh, it's been my experience where I have seen that. The best colleges, the best that I had was the EDD program where we actually had interaction with the college professor every couple of weeks. We talked on the phone and we had discussions about things instead of just going online, completing the work, and submitting it. So I think even though a lot of students may look at it as a disadvantage, uh, if you ask the question to most students, they'll ask you after the fact that the residencies or the dialogue and the conversations that they have had was probably the most advantageous to them in the growth process. You see your chat area? Yeah. Here's a question. I'll just repeat it back. It says, I work with faculty members who like to say everything is in the syllabus. Have you found this to be the case for all your online courses? Is it easy to navigate in the course and understand how to complete the assignments in the course but just by just following the syllabus? Um, I think that goes back to that cookie cutter effect. What probably happened was initially when I started, all the answers weren't there. And after the question started coming back to the faculty and the staff at the different universities, they probably developed that so that it covers all of the information. I think what it goes back to is the dialogue that's maintained between the student and the professor. And I mentioned about having office hours. I think that's important so that you can actually call them. I have had professors that I've never seen before and never spoken to except for, you know, online learning. So I think most of the information is in the syllabus. I think that is a good thing. But I don't want to give up any individuality in terms of the class structure by covering all the information and it being exactly the same. Uh, but most of the classes, I, if I had a problem or I had a question, I could always call my professor and, and discuss that with them. That, that's a good question. Usually what I did was call, but what I could do was send an email to my professor and he or she would then post it and say, in case anyone else know, needs to know an answer to this or in case anyone else has this question, here's the question. Kevin asked this and, and let me address this so it's not a question for you also. That's a good point. What would you say would be your top two or three pet peeves in taking online courses? If you could if you could fix anything, what, what would the top two or three be? Uh, I think one of the issues that I have, and we discussed this when you came over to talk to me, is that, <laughs> and you're laughing, what happens with online learning, if you're not careful, a traditional school or traditional professors will tend to think that maybe that uh, online learning is not providing you with the level of education that you should be obtaining. And I think I use the term autodidact. When I take a class, I'm not given the specific questions that are going to be asked on an exam. 
There's not someone that's going to follow back up with me and say, you need to kind of focus on this. I'm told to read chapter 5 through 8 and prepare a paper for it. Or there's going to be exam in that area. So the thing about that is, is that some people think that the level of education is not there when I don't think that that's the case. If the program is well put together, if the class is well developed, the education that's gained from that class is as much or more than sitting in a classroom where the professor is actually, in some ways, for lack of better words, sort of feeding you the information, letting you know what you need to focus on, letting you know what the test is going to be on. I haven't experienced that in the online atmosphere. This is what your assignment is. This is what you're supposed to do. You either do it or you don't, and you'll find out if it's adequate when the grades come around. So that's probably the top thing. Uh, the second thing would be if the professor doesn't set up the class in a way where you actually communicate with each other and increase the dialogue, that's an issue. And if you don't feel comfortable with uh, calling the professor, that's another issue. Now, I think some professors could do it like some students. Some students could take online learning because they're an introvert and they don't want to have all this interaction. Well, some professors are the same way. They may not want to have all this interaction, so they, you know, would prefer to, to teach online. But I think it's important. The, the interaction with each other is probably the, the, the most important thing, and if that's not there, the level of education isn't there either. Um, on your discussion panel on the right-hand side, mm -hmm. uh, question number... Two. Uh, do you feel that the quality of the work you produce changes if you have limited face-to-face -face interaction with the instructor, instructor and our students? I think it does, and I covered that just a second ago. If, if you don't have that communication with each other, uh, it is diminished because you, you, you're not covering the information that you feel that you should, or you're not gaining someone else's perspective, which may not be like yours. In a classroom where you're having that dialogue, where you're sitting face to face, there's a pro and a con to that. The pro is is that you're hearing someone else make a comment that you may not have thought about before. The con is is you may not feel comfortable in a classroom setting actually having a rebuttal or saying something back. That goes into the pro of you have reduced inhibition. You'll say things in an online environment which you may not uh, have the nerve to say face to face. So there, there's pros and cons both ways. The interaction is very important, and, and I can't emphasize that enough, the interaction with the professor and with fellow students. Question number three. Uh, what about the quality of work? Has it been too much or not enough to engage you in the content of the course? I think that depends on the course, uh, and it's almost like a regular college class uh, in a brick-and-mortar environment. If, if it's a class that you don't enjoy uh, as much, you may not interact as often with other students. If it's a class that you really enjoy, you'll increase interaction and communication with others, and you'll put more effort in it. Uh, and it's the same way with, with traditional schools. So it depends on the engagement also from the professor and the engagement with other students. My perspective on lectures and other content uh, that is available for you to study online and, and to restudy, do you think this helps with your retention? You know, I haven't had a class before where we actually had a video that we could watch. Maybe the professor taught in a traditional college also teaches in an online environment and they post that maybe on YouTube or, or somewhere else for us to watch that. I think that is important. I have had a few classes where you go in, click a link, and you watch a, a video or an explanation of, of a certain topic that you were discussing. That would enhance it. Uh, anything to uh, enhance someone's, because everyone learns from, from different perspectives. Uh, I like to write. I like to take notes in a class. I think I do best when I do that. I don't always do that when I'm online. I'll take notes when I'm back uh, at the house reading, but if I'm listening or looking at something online, I, I tend to not uh, take notes as I usually would. So there has to be something else at times to to enhance my learning, to, to gain my attention so that I'll focus on it. What would you say are your favorite type of assignments to do what that you have done? My favorite type of assignment would probably have been those group assignments um, where we had to work on a project together. We could collaborate in the chat session. We met in, met in the chat session, discussed uh, how we were going to do the different parts of a project. So we did the assignments, then we 
got back together later in the week, discussed where we were at so far, what did we accomplished, and then later we got back together, pulled the whole paper together, had someone to revise that paper, pull it together, and then present from there and submit it as a group project. Really the best that I've had as far as learning uh, occurred in the residencies. There were usually three-day sessions, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, where we met and uh, worked as a group of students in the same program. So the Department of Education, the Department of Public Policy and Administration, whatever, they break out into different sections, thousands of students in the same building, but bro broken out into different departments and working on different topics and working on projects together. Those were really uh, enjoyable for me, and I, you know, I had the fondest memories of those. I miss it because I've already accomplished all that, but I wish that I could go back and do that now. But, I, I, but those were face-to-face? Those were face-to-face, -face, yeah. Those, those were face-to-face. -face. And those were in, in different areas, like uh, you had the option of going to Jacksonville, Florida, or uh, Washington, D.C., or Baltimore, Maryland, where you go for several days, live in the hotel, go downstairs, have class all day, different sessions, and then you have that night to go back and work on the projects and work as a group together, and then meet back the next day. So if you had to do your program over again, would you choose a program that uh, had the flexibility of online courses, or would you would you personally choose just to be face-to-face? -face? I, I would actually choose to be face-to-face. -face. So this was a matter of me trying to continue my education and overcome the obstacle of, of those time constraints. And, you know, when I worked in law enforcement somewhere else, it was two days of nights, two days of, uh, two weeks of nights, two weeks of days. So the problem with that was there was no way I could do that. There was no way I could attend class, so I was trying to figure out how I could continue my education. But in terms of what I would choose, I would choose to actually sit in a classroom and interact face-to-face -face, uh, with professors and other students. Uh, and, and I guess that's where my perspective comes in specific to that's what is necessary for me in terms of interaction with other students and the faculty is that they try to enhance that, try to overcome the obstacles of a computer and try to increase the dialogue uh, between the students and the faculty. What are some strategies that faculty implement online that impede your online experience from being flexible? Uh, I've had a professor before that was very uh, condescending on the phone uh, where no one would say anything or answer any questions because it only took a, a she, one, once or twice where we answered a question and she didn't like the answer, so we backed away from that. Uh, <laughs> that was a bad experience, uh, but, I mean, it does happen, and it happens in classrooms, too, so it, uh, it's no different in some ways from there. Um, what are some strategies that faculty implement online that impeded your online experience? For, for instance, here's an example for me that I experienced as a non-traditional adult single parent student. Um, faculty would give exams and say, okay, you can only take this exam between three and five. Well, at that point, I wasn't at a job where I could take off. They didn't care what was going on outside of the four walls of my office. Right. So. If I could only take it between three and five, that means I missed exams. Right. So those type things, as a designer, I'm not in favor of. I understand why some faculty do it. But at the same point, I think some faculty don't realize that they're not the ones taking the exam. It's the students, and they're impeding the flexibility when they constrict those options like that. So have you ever had that happen? And that's a good point. The classes that I've taken where you had to submit your exam usually occurred uh, where you had to submit it prior to Sunday midnight, one of those situations like that. So you had maybe a three-day window that you could submit okay. the exam. And then they used uh, different programs so that the, the questions were not exactly the same, so there was any interaction between students. That didn't matter because it wasn't going to help you. Uh, but I think that the flexibility is important there. I mentioned that as a pro, I had to take online classes because that was the only way I could do it, like you. And if they start making specific ramifications, say you can only take this test between three and five, I on think this that one day. on this one day, that would probably cause the students to not to drop from that program. Uh, that was an interesting, that, that's an interesting point. I haven't had that. Uh, but what we would do is come to some type of consensus as far as the, the uh, phone conference that we would have as a class where the professor would 
would get in touch with everyone and say, what do you think is the best time and date for this? Saturday is probably best because it's a weekend. Does anyone see this as a problem? What's the best day? Saturday or Sunday? And these are the time slots. And then she would then gather that information and, and then make a determination as to when was going to be the best for most people. And then you're still limited because there, there may be people that work a schedule where they're working on Saturday and they may not be able to uh, break away depending on what their job is. So those are really, th those are difficult situations and those are things that we would have to figure out how to overcome. Uh, and what, what school are, where are you? And can you speak to their uh, technical support, their support infrastructure sure. to online learners? Right. Walden University is where I'm actually attending and that's where I got my master's and uh, continued on. Walden had a master's program in public administration. They didn't have a PhD program. I finished the master's, then I went on to EDD, and then they opened up a PhD program. And I said, you know what? All my transfer credits are going to go into this PhD program, so I started this. But they were very good about uh, covering all the information, about uh, making sure that the syllabus, like it was mentioned earlier, covered all that. They started back in the 1970s with distance learning. So look how long that's existed. Now that was when you mailed the books out, you mailed the test out, and you had to mail all the stuff back. But they've got a lot of experience over a long period of time where they have sort of worked this process out, and they've got a lot of students. Uh, and I can tell they've grown a lot, too. They've tried to streamline the process. If you've got an issue, you can call customer support. If you need uh, to speak to an advisor, you've got a specific advisor that's assigned to you. Uh, you've got a chair for your dissertation, just like you would in, in, uh, in your brick-and-mortar school. So. They try to do things to make it as close to uh, traditional as they can. Is their tech support 24-7 um, or does it have extended hours? No, it's 24-7, so you can call anytime you need to. You could call in, in the middle of the night, which is probably the case with a lot of students, uh, calling trying to, to finish a paper, their, their blackboard's locked up, or, you know, what's the issue here? And they also keep you notified about, you know, outages on the blackboard or, or the internet's going to be down, the web page is going to be down, and you'll get an email well in advance uh, before that happens. So they, they do keep us advised. They keep you posted. Are there any additional questions for uh, Keith Lyles? Are there any additional questions for Keith uh, Lyles? Sure. kind of a funny question. When I uh, was a student here in psychology, they said never do a group project because you're going to have people that really work hard and you have people that sort of follow in your coattails and they're going to take the ride and get the same grade you do. Uh, I think that that's probably an issue online as it is in class. It's the same issue and you've got to try to overcome that obstacle. If that happens, uh, what, what we would have happen is a professor would get back involved and say, is everybody on board? Is there any questions? Does everyone have their assignments? Everything going well. And she would also say, or he would say, if you've got any questions, call me, give me a call so we can cover those questions. So you could say, Kevin's not doing his job. Kevin's not pulling his load. And, and we didn't have that happen. And I think it was probably because the inhibition was lowered. We would sort of say what we needed to say. We would do what we needed to do. And we worked better because you had the flexibility of doing it whenever you needed to do it and coming back and meeting in a chat session on Wednesday when you started a project the Sunday before. You could follow back up. And, and work on it from there. Hopefully that answered that. Okay, if there are no more questions, we're going to end this session. And I thank okay, you. If there are no more Chief questions, we're going to end this session. For this and I thank you, um, Chief Louse, for all of the uh, notes and resources for this. Um, thank you. And all of the session notes and resources for this recorded. Uh, so all of that will be shared next uh, week. Session when will be I get, shared uh, and, it's, and it's being recorded. So all of that will be shared uh, next week when I get uh, break loose from this conference.